So hi, I'm Tom Evans and I'm thrilled today to be talking with Mark Newey. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing very well indeed, thank you. Thank so I'm you. very good, busy. To, good to see you. Glad good. year as well. Not sure where this is going to go, but I'm going to enjoy it anyway. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a brief exploration. I'm speaking to people that have read uh, This We Know. And mm. actually also, some, some of the readers have also left uh, reviews, which would be very kind of. I did love your review. And you were the, about the first bloke to review it, which is really good. Oh, so. <laughs> and actually, you're, you're the first bloke I'm interviewing as part of this series as well. That's an honour then, in that case. Exactly, exactly. So, so all I really want to do, this is not about the book, because uh, people can download and read the book themselves. I'm kind of curious to know what you know. <laughs> What I know, do you know? It's it's going to be hard not to sort of fall back on on uh, what you know when we do for a living, really. And I'm not I'm, I don't plan to go into lots of personal history, but um, I, I mean I'm basically a therapist, and I see people for stress, anxiety, eating depressions, uh, eating disorders rather, depression, that sort of thing. And I guess what I now know that I didn't know um, is how to make the unconscious conscious. Because that's what I do with my clients. Wow, that's a really good thing to know, Mark. It, it is. I mean, at, at the end of the day, you all know this as well as I do. You can only get so far because, by definition, the unconscious is unconscious. Yeah. But there are there are some filters and some rules you can apply, and that's basically what I've learned over the last twelve years of doing it, uh, of doing what I'm do, is is helping people actually make conscious the emotional patterns, the habitual patterns, the behavioral patterns that they've got that they're to some degree stuck with because they're unconscious but didn't really know were, were there or didn't really know what was going on behind it. Oh, now you've just raised a little bit of a light bulb in me then, Mark. Can I ask you a question though? Because I didn't plan to write this, we know it just arrived, right? It really wasn't on my radar. I'd already written a book for this year. I thought that was my book for the year. That's a big book as well, the one the other one I wrote. And it yeah. just arrived. So is that an example of something bubbling in our unconscious that just comes well, to our conscious mind without a doubt yeah. absolutely i mean i would say writing and drawing painting are those sort of things where something comes to the point where you're ready to just go and sometimes it probably takes you by surprise i mean oh, i it did what i find is um you know my my relaxation uh my prime relaxation time is actually i go cycling i go oh. on my own I don't push myself particularly hard, but I'll probably go for three hours, so it's quite a long trip. And I tell you what, the last three times I've gone, I've come away with a book. Wow. It's just there, and I've quickly got home and had to get a notebook out and sketch out, you know, the, 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 the structure of the book. Three, the last three times I've got three books that were, that were that, well, they weren't there three weekends ago, none of them. Wow. And it's, I think so few of us actually allow our unconscious to do what it's good at which is being creative yeah um the other bit i've worked out that i do now know um the other time i'm very creative is not <laughs> it's not good actually every now and again i wake up in the middle of the night not for any particular reason um i just get a stream of of creative thoughts mm -hmm. um which is very useful but it's a shame it's at three o'clock in the morning and um, the first time it happened, I got slightly stressed out about it because it was so, so many thoughts were coming through. They were so creative, so some of it completely off the wall. Um, and I was writing down in, in a little notebook um, that I've got next to my bed. Uh, and then the second time it happened, I thought, no, this is okay. Maybe this is my process. Maybe this is what, ha you know, has to happen. And it happened last night, and I was probably overall awake for a couple of hours. On and off, I'm sure I drifted off and, mm. and came again. But I've looked at my notebook this morning, and there's some stonking stuff. Wow! Couldn't have come up with rationally, logically. Do you know what I mean? It just I wouldn't do. have come up that way. And so I'm becoming, <laughs> I'm getting to the point where I'm accepting maybe that's what's going to happen. Every now and again, I'll wake up in the middle of the night with this stream of creative consciousness, and that's fine. Oh. And by the way, I don't feel knackered, so I'm all right. That's going to be good. So, yeah. so what, what, what did you know then blocks that creative flow? Oh, mm. do you know what's come up for me? Yeah. Life. <laughs> okay. 
uh, re real life. I mean, it's just everything's so busy, isn't it? You know, yeah. we're, we're all running around frantically. You know, you've just seen a client off. I've just seen a client off. We're rushing to the... That's what stops the creativity. It's, it's a block. And I think... In many respects, I would suggest that probably two or three hundred years ago, it was easier to write books, it was easier to paint, because life was just slower. Yeah. Uh, and now, I think, we probably need to place ourselves in a situation where we can actually be creative. So, you know, get away from life, as it were, and, and like going off on a bike ride, for example. Because yeah. um, I think when you're running around doing your daily stuff, the creativity is well, it's it's blocked from coming out. I think the unconscious is still working on it, but it you know you you're not ready to. And I'm a bit like you. When I write, a I have to get away. I can't, for some bizarre reason I cannot write at home, even if nobody else is here. I still can't write, so I go away and I set myself up. You know, I do some deep breathing, probably meditate a little bit um, just before I write, and it just flows much easier. And like riding a bike, do you find that the more you do it, the better you get at it? Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah, so you absolutely. don't even know and you're riding that bike anymore. No, exactly. Yeah. It becomes a program that you just do, uh, and you stop worrying about it. And do you know what I mean? It's. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's tell me, Rob, what what don't you know? <laughs> what don't I don't know? You know that's much harder. What don't I know? Uh, well, I'll tell you what's come up, because I'm always a, a big one for just saying the first thing that comes up in my head. It's how the planets work, how the planetary system, and God knows where that's come from, how they all revolve around each other, how they don't crash into each other, okay. um, and how we fit into, into the middle of all that, us insignificant little earthlings, how do we fit into the bigger picture? Wow, that's a fantastic thing not to know, and also a fantastic thing to research as well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yes. So You've got that sort of mind. So this earth and this rock that we're, we're sitting on, obviously we're, we're separated by a few uh, tens of miles at the moment, we're speaking over Skype. But one thing that we share with all 7 billion people on this planet is we're both travelling at 1,000 miles an hour, the ground under our feet is, and, we're, and the yeah. Earth itself is hurtling through space at 66,000 miles an hour right now. Right, so we share that, which is yeah. kind of interesting. But yeah. on, this yeah, rock, on this rock, this spaceship that we're sharing this journey on, which is you know an incredibly special thing to think about, isn't it? We're all sharing this journey together at this time. What kind of world and what spaceship would you like to be on in, let's say, 10 or 20 years' time? What would you like it to look like? Wow. Um, John, I sound like a real hippie. Um, <laughs> less people in towns and cities, whether that's achievable by that date, I don't know. Yeah. Um, life's slower. Life, the planet may be still travelling at the same speed, but our lives are slower. And we are far more, we're paying far more attention to people and community. Because at the end of the day, that's what makes us happy. Yeah. And that's the bit that, you know, that's the bit that's gone uh, drastically in, in the last 10 years. It's been going for 30, 40 years, but it seems to have accelerated a lot in the last 10 years. It, you know, I live in a, an idyllic chocolate boxy village, and we moved here 23 years ago, and there was something going on in the village at least twice a month. Okay. You know, <laughs> some fundraising activity, or there was a tug of war or something. Last year, there were two, all year, one of which was the carol service, which doesn't really count. Yeah. So what? even in a little chocolate boxy village like ours, that, where there was a real community 23 years ago, yeah. everybody's too busy to do this stuff together. It's all yeah. gone, and it's, yeah, it's a bit of a, a soapbox of mine. So I would like to see, in, was it 20 years, our spaceship is paying much more attention to people business is, t is paying much more attention to people. People are at the core of business instead of cutting costs and making people redundant and all the rest of it. Um, and the focus on profit, the focus is actually on people. Because the profit will come. You know, if you focus on people, people are motivated in their job, they're motivated to work as a team, the profit will come. You don't have to worry about the profit. You just worry about the people. So it's turning business on its head. 
Not as it's currently. And and this is something you're kind of active in at the moment. The the, the work you're doing with authentic tribes uh, kind of preaches this message, doesn't it? A absolutely. It's basically it's getting people off their treadmill so they can actually look at their life and that's what most people are stuck on a treadmill without realizing it you know working like crazy um, coming home at whatever nine o'clock at night absolutely shattered and wondering why they're unhappy why they're unfulfilled because they're not living their life in a way that makes them happy they're not being authentic not you. and I guess that this is something that people don't even know there's an alternative do they? exactly I mean you're you're talking to somebody who had a very corporate career and basically, cut the long story short, crashed. So I burnt out and had a breakdown. Yeah. The, the, the signals were there for me that I needed to change something, I needed to slow down. And my mum, my mum even told me at 35 I was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> she, she wasn't far wrong at yeah. 40 at the breakdown, so you know, she was only five years out. Yeah. Um, and it's because I didn't know there was an alternative. There is an alternative, and you know, you get people off their treadmill, and they suddenly think, "Yeah, actually, I don't need to be going into the office at seven thirty and coming." In. There is an alternative. It's just that people don't think there is, because that's what you're expected to do. You're expected to go into the office. You're expected to work your stocks off. You're expected to earn loads of money. And you're right. There's an alternative well, that most people don't know is there. That is a lovely thing to know and well I know that you're bringing this gift to the planet Mark I wish you every success in in getting people to be more authentic and getting off that treadmill it's great to talk to you today and it's great to have this male perspective on all of this which is just Absolutely. fantastic not that the women yeah. I've spoken to haven't had some marvellous things to share but it's the first time I've had a bloke that's saying it as it is so thank you so much for that that's my pleasure I can't do any any other way got to be authentic fabulous you take care and you cheers Bye. Tom Bye.